my name uh, is Peggy Mapena. Uh, I'm a Afro House DJ and music producer from Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. I came up with the name Night Freak um, through my character, and the night came from me just DJing at night, you know. So I just like, uh, since my work is mostly at night, so I just get the night part. The freak is more of like the kind of person I, I am, like I'm, I'm crazy with friends and stuff like that. So I couldn't be night crazy, so freak was the closest thing that could rhyme. That was the nicest to say. So I just used freak instead of crazy, so yeah. I started learning how to produce in 2010, but I am from a music family. Uh, my dad is a music lecturer, so basically I grew up around music and stuff like that. So 2010, a friend introduced me to Tractor, and uh, by the time I could play a few instruments, just not that good, but I could play, I like music. So when my friend introduced me to Tractor, I was like, okay, I want to try this out. Then the same friend um, <laughs> showed me FL Studio. So yeah, man, that, that's that's how I started, man. Before music, uh, I was doing um, uh, motor mechanics uh, at Varsity. I dropped out in my second year, to to because I wasn't I was I wasn't really happy with with what I was doing because it was more like my parents' um, vision and goal, but I wasn't really into it. Yeah, I liked cars and stuff like that, but I didn't see myself doing a nine to five and stuff like that. So I felt like music was my best release. So I I dropped out in my diploma year, then I, I went and um, started apprenticeship at a sound engineering school, yeah. The music industry is hard, bro, like, I, I, I'm getting there, bro, uh, I'm learning as I go, um, because there's no, there, there are no schools here to, to teach you what I do, you know, like, we see in other countries whereby you can go to a DJ school, you can go to a music production school. I had to learn through YouTube. I had to learn the ins and outs of the industry through uh, watching tutorials online. So I am learning as I go, bro. I am learning as I go. But I'm, I'm so happy with where I am at the moment. I, I, I don't regret anything. I can say I started living off music uh, 20, 2020. That's when the money started coming in, uh, you know. But before that, uh, I was doing, like, my nine-to-fives, uh, you know, just to support just to support uh, the music itself and, and help out at home. So I had to have a nine-to-five. Then at night, I would... Uh, I would sit down and do my projects after work uh, or maybe go do some side gigs like do birthday parties, you know, those small gigs just to get just to get by, you know. So I can only say I started living off music in from as from 20, 2021 or 2020. I saw 2021. Yeah. Where I started like um, producing for other people, you know, collabs and stuff like that and getting a few gigs in there. But before that, yeah, I had a nine to five. Like I said, my dad is a music lecturer, so you'd hear all sorts of music, bro. You hear reggae, you hear um, jazz and stuff like that. But my liking, what 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 I liked the most um, at first was hip hop. Then my brothers introduced me to house music. Then a friend of mine introduced me to EDM. So I I got my taste of music is from the people that I used to hang around and. So basically, um, but my final love was of, was house, of course. But my music taste was because of the people I used to hang around with. Yeah. <music> DJ Chucky, bro. DJ Chucky, Layback Luke, bro. Like, those are the guys that really set, like, set me up for life, bro. That, like, yo, I was like, I want to do this, you know. Back then you'd be just DJing for the sake of the love of the music, but the passion part about music of me being like the main person, me being 
me wanting my name to be out there was because of DJ Chucky and Laybeck. Look, like I used to watch those guys play the music they were making. It was amazing for, for, for that time, you know. By that time, I think they were still pushing what's called Dutch House. That's what they were pushing, yeah. So that's the kind of stuff that I was listening to. So I was like, wow. I think a DJ is a person who's supposed to introduce new music to people. A good DJ who will play stuff that you want to hear. A great DJ who will play stuff that he knows you need to hear. So that's my definition of a good DJ. I've been producing for so long, bro, like without without playing gigs. So for now, I'd say I prefer to DJ than than to produce music, bro. Because I've been I've been I've been in the studio for the longest of time, and I'm yet to be in the studio for the longest of time. So I'd say I prefer to DJ now, and and I've seen the other side of DJing where it comes with traveling, meeting new people, you know. So yeah, bro, I, I'd say. DJing for now, I prefer DJing. I make music because it's, it's, it's something that I love, bro. It's something that I love, sharing my thoughts and emotions and ideas with people. Because basically music is just like um, you're sharing how you feel at that moment in time. What you make is like you painting a canvas of, um, you can hear the mood of a person in a song. Like, if you're happy, you're going to make happy music. Like, if you're sad, you're going to make sad music. So, the mood that I'm in, it determines the song that I'm going to make. If I'm in a happy mood, yeah, bro, you're going you're gonna to get some nice music. If if I'm not in a good mood, I doubt that song is even going to come out. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just expressing yourself and just painting a picture. Yeah, and sharing what my ideas with people out there. So basically, that's why I make music, just to share how I feel or in my ideas. My music under the stores, it falls under Afro House, but I call what I make Afro Progressive. Like most of my songs, I, I would call them Afro Progressive because it's not, it's not, it's not your... It's not your everyday Afro house, um, whereby I incorporate a lot of melodies in my songs, a lot of progressive chords and stuff like that. So I'll call mine Afro progressive. Gao, um, I wasn't even supposed to be on this EP, bro, <laughs> on, on the Premier Gao re, uh, remix. So Francis sent me uh, the vocals and the, and, and the stems. It was like, like a last minute thing. They're like, yo, bro, do you want to do this? Uh, you've only got two weeks to do this. So I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy. I got scared because there was black motion on, on, the, on the EP, bro. So uh, like I heard their remix, bro, it was crazy. And I just made something. So the first version that I made for Premier Gao, uh, Francis didn't like it. He was like, yo, bro, like, this is not your sound. This is not your style. Give us the, 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 the and he calls it Afro Flex, but initially it's called Afro Buzz from my, my Africa remix that I did. He wanted that sound because that's a song they discovered me with. So I went back again and redid, like, the whole project. So I stripped it down, but left the percussions. Then I started making the... And I started making uh, the melody. But when I'm producing, I start with the bass line. That's how I produce percussions, bass line. Then just build chords around that bass line. Then I add my up. That's it. That's how I made Premier Gao. So Premier Gao, um, the vocals that you hear there, like the time stretch and stuff like that from the original vocals, because the original vocals weren't that nice. <laughs> the ones that we got, they weren't that nice. So we had to fix those again. Um, then, yeah, after that, I did my remix. Uh, I sent it to Francis. Uh, they liked it. They sent it to Spinning. That was it, bro. We've been having Afro House for the longest of time, bro. Like, Afro House has been so big in Africa. 
if it wasn't for black coffee, I don't think some of the music that we were making or you would even know about me, you know? So we needed that one guy to, to like, take what we're creating and make you guys listen to it. And we are so fortunate that now everybody's starting to look at who's making the music than just black coffee only. Because at some point, everybody was like, you know, looking at black coffee, but they weren't giving attention to the people that were actually creating the music. So we appreciate that people are now actually, you know, digging deep and like trying to find the tracks, trying to find the songs, trying to connect with the people that are making the music. As much as we appreciate um, the people that are marketing us and, and stuff like that, um, we feel like, you know, the the producer should also get the limelight and actually benefit from the music they're making and the music that they're giving out to the people as well. Not all of of course not all of us are school dropouts, but we're coming from a space whereby Afro House is not like your commercial genre. It's not the it's not the genre that you'd be watching on MTV or Channel O and stuff like that. It's a niche community. Seeing your song playing at Burning Man, seeing your song playing in Tulum, bro, like those are dreams coming true for some people, you know, because those that's like motivation for you to keep going. And, you know, that's like motivation for you to 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 wake up at like at 2 a.m. and jump in the studio and start making music. It's motivation. We need to see those videos. But it comes a point in time where you actually want to be there and experience how people feel about what you're creating. You know, so, yeah. I think we, we, with with time, I hope we get more Afro House artists uh, touring and going out the, into, into the world. And it's also lucrative for the promoters and the artists as well. Because right now, I feel like as much as we're pushing the genre, um, it's, 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 a, it's a risky business for promoters to bring us out there because of the flights, you know, the expenses and stuff like that. So yeah, we, we want to we want to grow, but at the same time we don't want I don't think people want this to be too commercial. how we came about that one i met uh sean and friends via instagram uh we met um i was like yo i like your music um long story short can can we link up and talk so like yo bro it's cool so we went on a on a whatsapp call whatsapp call tells me he wants me to do a remix of one of his songs so he sent me two songs initially um I, I picked uh, O'Day Rating. That's the one that I wanted. He sent me the stems, the vocals. Funny enough, when I when I when I made that song, I was in bed, bro. I was just using my HD my HD twenty five Sennheiser headphones. I was in bed, bro. It was cold, so I couldn't like be in the studio. So I had my laptop on my in bed, made that song. Uh, same strategy, percussions, my bass line, um, built my chord. The only difference with that song was like the piano, and most of my songs I don't I don't I don't I, I don't I don't make I don't add pianos or live instruments. If I do add live instruments in my songs, maybe they're from the original. I'll get them from the original. It was the first time it was the first time me actually playing the key, piano and adding it into a song, because most of the times I take like the vocals from the original song. Sorry, the the instruments from the original song. So audio radio was very different. And without the percussions, it's a whole electronic song, bro. Without the percussions, you think that it's like EDM, slowed down EDM. So that's another interesting thing about audio radio that I found. It was different from the other stuff, but you could hear the progressiveness in the song. So yeah, that's how I came about that one. Basically why I was remixing so many songs. I li- I like remixing, bro. I like telling a story differently from 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 the original song cuz basically like how I got to love 
producing was because I used to do a lot of bootlegs and remixes. So to me, remixing is the easiest thing as compared to producing your own music. But this year, I wanted I wanted to have more originals because my catalog is kind of full of remixes. So this year, I wanted to do uh, more originals. But you always get people wanting your sound and their music. So at times, that's why I kind of have a lot of remixes because people... DM like yo, I want you on my song, yada yada yada. So yeah, yeah, and also it, it's a faster way of making money. <laughs> so yeah. If you listen to Afrobeat, I feel like what determines a genre is how the percussions are, are laid down. So in in EDM, you would get your clap, your your clap at every like um, four bars or whatever. Uh, then with 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 Afro house, you get your drums and your snares. Basically, that's that. With EDM, it's just claps and maybe a few toms. But with Afro house, it's your snares, it's your drums, and your kick, and the way that they are arranged. So, Afro house, it's almost like the percussions are arranged like it's almost like it's Afro beat. That's how it is. Then, mine is just beat it like mine is just faster. That's all. That's the difference. So the way you structure your percussions is what determines the genre. That's how I thought about it. So the way I put Afro House percussions or house percussions, then I take maybe EDM synths and progressions, then merge all that. That's how I came up with my sound. So it's basically like slowed down EDM. So that song is with uh, DJ Claudia, uh, the lady, I think she's from Colombia. And then the vocalist is BB Din, uh, he's from DRC, but right now uh, he's based in um, in France. So the inspiration of the song, um, the first initial idea, the song had um, Spanish, Hispanic vocals, I think. That's correct. I don't know. But the guy that sang the song was from Colombia. Then I did the beat. Um, the label didn't like it. So we stripped those vocals. Uh, we asked BB Din to do uh, vocals for us for that particular song. So um, same sound. Uh, but I think it's more similar to what? More similar to... Uh, now nah, you just have to hear the song because because it's it's same same sound, bro. It's progressive, um, uh, with 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 a Latin groove, although with a Latin groove, uh, yeah. Because of 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 where the other of of where the other lady is from, so we're just trying to accommodate her in the project as well, just to bring out like her own culture. Uh, um, uh, since I was coming with my own style, you know, I felt like we had to bring something that people from her end could relate to. So that's why we, we had that kind of uh, of drum line going. And then uh, with with um, the vocals from BB, it was totally a culture mesh. It was dope. There are like so many other songs before that song. Uh, we have Camille in February 10. I've got another one with N Friends called uh, Ike Onu. Um... Yeah, maybe it's going to be released after these other two songs. I think it will be the third, third release. Yeah, because we're doing these other two first, and then it will be the third release. What what I usually do, I always like to be like three three or two songs ahead in my release plan. So I, 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 make, so I make a lot of music, then I send it to the label, then we like pick and say, okay, we're going to release this, 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 when, when. I don't like producing under pressure and whereby like i don't have any music to put out there and then like um i just start making music like this month to release for next month no i like to be like two songs ahead of the of the of, of the release schedule so like i said like february we have camille and then we have another one and then um 
and then Pesa Esango and maybe in June. So I create and give it to the label or we create, then we sit down and start picking what's good to release or this is not good enough. Hopefully if I have a lot of songs, maybe by June, maybe I'll release an EP. That's if there, like, there's too many songs. But for now, with the songs that we have, most of them are collabs. So I can't just take collabs and, and just throw them into an EP. Also, it depends with the release schedule of the other artists, you know. So it, maybe they have other songs they had planned on releasing as well. So that's why I'm saying um, I have a release plan on how I put out my music. Yeah. This year, I'm trying to focus on, on gigs. Yeah, I'm trying to tour more. I'm trying to go out there. I'm trying to have original with bigger artists. And uh, yeah, basically that. I'm, tr- I'm trying to strike more collabs, sign a few songs with major labels, uh, uh, get more, get maybe two booking agencies pushing me. Yeah, that, that's, that's my, 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 my plan for now. Music that I'm mixing, the songs that I'm mixing a lot in my in my sets. Let's see. I'd say there's a remix by a guy called Blanca Mazimela from South Africa. It's a remix to a song by E Disease and UG. It's called Chuki. I've been playing that song a lot on my sets. That's one. Now uh, the song is not yet out, but I'm quite sure. Uh, Round about April, they I, I they think he's gonna drop it. I don't think, for now, I think it's just gonna be being played by the DJs, and that's it. So yeah, look forward to that one, uh, Chuki. It's a, it's a great song by Blanca Mazimela. Uh the second song is called "Lost Love" by Kasango and uh, G Washington. And then the third song has to be mine, uh, Francis Messier Night Freak and Eaters is Camille. Yeah, those are three songs that I've been like, like on all my sets, like I play those songs.